the Prep Beat. I'm TJ Holmes. Along with next to me, as always, Thomas Lawrence. We are previewing Week Four Footlet Shafts, the game of the week. Shafts is coming off a bye. They got a big win going into their bye week the week before against Del Norte. Foothill has had kind of the opposite. They've started 0-3. They've had a really tough preseason schedule from two teams that are ranked highly in state, but that's they're kind of coming in from opposite ends right now. Yeah, you know, the records can be a bit deceiving. Shasta, 2-1, and one, has the winning team kind of feel coming in. But their one real tough test this year at West Valley, they were beaten pretty badly. Del Norte, a lukewarm team, and they did struggle with them en route to a win. Foothill, as we've talked about, 0-3, but it's such a tough schedule early on, even going to last. And, you know, that's a tough, infamously a tough road trip for everyone. You know, for them, they're still in that new coach era, you know, the, the Joey Brown era. And so they really need that win just for their psyche. You know, they know they can play football. Just getting that win on the board, especially against an inter district rival would just be huge for them and for Shasta for that matter. Yeah, it really would be and that's what Joy Brown talked about today is you know, they want to get that first win so they can kind of get the monkey off their back. You know, well, something else is that between these two teams, two rivals, you know, Foyles won the last five, but uh, but Shasta's also had a, a history of winning their their league openers. You know, they've won six of the last seven, but Foothill took that away last year. They ended that streak last year with their win. Then I kind of look at you know, they've had, Foyle's always had those prolific passers the last couple of years. And you got Zach Ray, you got Tucker Wilson, Ryan Pollard, all the records he broke last year. He's back for senior season. We expected Phil to pass the ball as much as they have because they've actually thrown the ball more than they've ran the ball this year. We've expected that out of this Foothill team, but it's also because they've been playing behind a lot in a lot of these games. You know, that's a team that likes to pass the ball a little bit too, especially for a high school team in this area where running is so big. And they have a ton of experience in that receiving core. You know, not the kind of guy. The, you know the section MVP caliber guy, but a lot of talent there. You know they know what they're doing, and that matches up with the secondary for Foothill with a lot of speed and athleticism, but relatively inexperienced, and that could kind of play out in Shasta's favor, or you know at least be a key matchup in this one. Yeah, we, we go from not being the game of the week into you know from such rival rivals from this area to a game that couldn't be further from the the opposite. Uh, you look at West Valley's hosting Turlock. Uh, this is a West Valley team, you know, coming, you know, that came off an enterprise loss, went into a bye, uh, and they're host, you know, they're hosting a Sac Joaquin section team that's ranked number 16 in the Sac Joaquin section. You know, it's a good thing that the Eagles have had those two weeks to to get over that enterprise loss, get ready for this team, and. You know, another huge challenge, but such a different challenge in Enterprise. You know, Turlock has a three-headed offensive monster led by tight end Patrick Green. He's a top 40 ranked tight end in the nation, at least preseason by ESPN. They've got a great quarterback. Sean Downs, a great running back, Javon Hogan. So it's going to be quite a test. I and mean, we know how great that Eagles defense is. But, you know, it's put to the test against Enterprise's run game. It'll be put to the test in different ways in this one. Yeah, I think I think West Valley, they're, they're just so hungry for a win. Um, I wouldn't want to be Turlock coming in because this is a the Eagles program. They don't lose back-to-back -back games very often, especially with this group that they have, this talented senior class. They're not going to want to lose two in a row and, and kind of have that hanging over them the rest of the season. They're out to prove something in this week. And then, you, you know, you look into another game that someone kind of wants to prove themselves as Red Bluff. They haven't really had – the, the schedule to prove that they've played someone yet. They're hosting Enterprise in a battle of the unbeatens. You know, last year these two were undefeated coming into this game and Enterprise blew them out. Red Bluff's getting them at home this year. They don't want to they won't, don't want to let that happen again. But fortunately one of these two teams have to, fortunately one of these two teams get a loss and Enterprise is looking really strong right now. Yeah, you know, their coach, Darren Trueblood, went to Red Bluff, and he hasn't really been too kind to his alma mater, especially recently. We talked about last year, that 43-point that win for Enterprise, and a couple teams 3-0, and but like you said, Enterprise 3-0 and with a brutal schedule. You know, Red Bluff coming off an emotional win, just as Corning last week in that rivalry game on the road, but Corning is not even in the same stratosphere as Enterprise. Absolutely. You know, this, that game could see a lot of offense, at least from the enterprise side, Red Bluff, we're still yet to see what they can do, especially against a really one of the best defensive teams in the section. Um, the defense will be a little bit hard to find in the next game. You know, 
uh, Chico hosting CV. There was a lot of scoring last year. I think we can expect to see that again this year with CV running their up-tempo offense. They've really seemed to get an edge with that style and that scheme this year, that spread wing T. They've averaging about 72 plays over the last two weeks. They put up 31 on Enterprise last week. And I think that with their offense, they could really get moving in this game. They absolutely could. One thing CV used last year to really torch Chico, especially in the first half when they gained a lead last year, is that passing game. Obviously, they're not that well known for it because they're a wing T team. But, you know, quarterback Tim Naylor, 10th in the section in passing. You saw last week against Enterprise, threw a 70-yard bomb to Tony Penta for a touchdown. So, you know, his arm is as good as it's been. And that could be a tool for them to really get out early, get out ahead on the road. And for some of the other games going on in the area, you got Trinity, who's just surging right now, moved up to number two in the media poll. They're going to North Coast sections, McKinleyville. We got a Division Three matchup. U Prep travels down to Williams. U Prep looking for his first win in the division this year. And Mount Shasta gets running back Eli Chapman back. He's been injured this year as a thousand yard rusher, and they're hosting Modoc. Uh, battle of D4 heavies down in Maxwell. Fall River travels down there to face the Panthers, looking to avenge a loss last week to Chester. And then eight man football, top ranked Ren Christian goes to Butte Valley in a battle of unbeatens and two top five ranked teams in that division. So we'll see if the Lions can hang on to that number one spot. Yeah, and you know, that's the team that uh, quarterback Hayden Piper uh, hurt his clavel against in the playoffs last year. So probably a little redemption on their mind, too. Absolutely. For more high school sports breakdown and coverage and blogs, Scores from Friday night's game and video highlights, check out prepbeat.com.